Humanistic model and HR processes, we can look at how they are closely linked. Drive to acquire is related to salary, the tools available for working, basic hygiene condition. Many of you might remember hygiene and motivation theory of Herzberg. It talks about things which motivate at work do not prevent the dissatisfaction or things which prevent dissatisfaction not necessarily result into motivation. Things which prevent dissatisfaction are basic availability of the space, in most of the cases it is salary, their ability to put forth their uh, um, requirements, all these are the hygiene conditions and these are related to drive to acquire. Human beings also need clarity about what is their territory, how their performance will be evaluated and also look for method, also look for inputs to carry out their day to day work. And for that we looked at HR processes like job description, job analysis, performance management system, training and development, these are the inputs which make people com comfortable in their roles and that is the satisfaction they get because they have a sense of boundary, they have a sense of their own space wherein they can perform and by performing over there they can be ensured about their uh, acquisitions, uh, uh, they can be ensured about their salary etcetera. And being in that space, they also wish to have positive relations. Every employee thinks of working, every employee look forward to work in a positive environment where people have sense of teamwork, where organization has positive climate of openness, trust, uh, creative problem solving, opportunity to take initiatives, etc. It is related to drive to bond and drive to comprehend. Drive to bond arises from the social nature of human being. That aspect must be taken care of in the HR processes and that happens by enhancing engagement practices, by building teams and creating more and more opportunity for the open communication so that people can resolve their conflict amicably and work as community. But that is not sufficient for human beings. They also need to know how they are contributing, how their work is contributing towards larger scheme of things, how their work is meaningful in the overall scheme of organization and its role in society and that is related to drive to comprehend. Drive to comprehend is uh, satisfied when organizations have clear mission and purpose and have HR processes, leadership, organization culture which help our people to find out their meaning and purpose in their work and give them opportunity to live that meaning and purpose. Are these nice things only, are these good things to have or do these things have uh, coherence with the business objectives. So, McKinsey's study being carried out by Dhingra and the other authors names are given in this slide. They suggest that people who live their purpose at work, uh, they are found to be more productive, they are healthier, they are resilient. So, after the personal or organizational crisis, uh, they can come back to the same level of performance again in much faster way if they find their work meaningful and purposeful and they are also more likely to stay in the company. When personal purpose and organization purpose are aligned, uh, 
that leads to high level of employee engagement, heightened loyalty and greater willingness to recommend the company to others. So, you might remember the very second drive, very second slide in this session, we talked about Forbes best employer survey. We can connect this slide with that second one, where we looked at sense of teamwork, camaraderie or positive recommendation about the organization towards friends and family, all these things are connected to drive to bond and drive to comprehend. That is our basic nature of working in the community, our urge to be part of the community and also our urge to seek meaning and purpose in what we do. This is uh, assured, this is the result of this McKinsey study as well. We can look at this study in a more nuanced way and to make sense of whether meaning and purpose is prevalent in all levels of organization or not. That is an important question. And what is found in this study is that uh, frontline managers are less likely to say that they find their work meaning, they find meaning in purpose in their work. Whereas, uh, managers, middle level or senior level managers are more likely to look at their work as something which is giving them meaning and purpose. So, this situation has clear implication on the HR function. HR function need to give the attention to the fact that uh, 10 times, it is 10 times less likely than management level colleague to say that they have had opportunity to reflect on their purpose in case of frontline managers. And frontline managers and employee are 9 times less likely to say that they would had, had a manager foster opportunities for them to work on purposeful project. And that is where HR has to play a very important role. They need to communicate to that to the managers that managers have a very important responsibility towards the frontline managers and employees to make them see role of their job, the importance of their job in the larger scheme of things. Since they are generally focused on the small territory or the small part of a large, uh, uh, small part of the very big job many a time and in this survey it is coming out most of the time, they are not able to see how their work is contributing to the larger level success and larger positive impact of their work on the organization and role of their organization in the society. So, it is important for managers to communicate this to the frontline managers and employees that how their work is contributing to the larger scheme of things. And it is HR's role to communicate this and sensitize the managers about this need. How they can do it? They can do it in the three step process as being suggested by these authors. These three step are start, reflect and help. Start with organization purpose. Look at how organization purpose captures meaning and purpose for everybody who is part of the organization. They need to create opportunity to reflect and connect and keep doing that this process, so that they do not forget that even their so seem seemingly small contribution is contributing to the realization of the mission and purpose of organization. And helping people to live their purpose at work. Many a time people may have different different aptitude towards contributing to different kinds of job. Many a time people would like to contribute towards certain thing, but they may require some developmental inputs. That can be given in the form of coaching, mentoring, training and that can help people to not only contribute to the larger meaning and purpose, not only contribute to uh, contribute more to realize the mission and purpose of the organization, but also will help frontline managers to see 
that they are contributing. In the nutshell, the best employee relations are reflected in the trust, fairness and respect. Trust is about uh, my belief in other party that and that party can be manager or organization that it has authenticity. It is behaving as if it is supposed to behave, it is behaving according to its deeper intentions. Logic aspect of trust is my belief that person has the necessary intellectual wherewithal, intellectual resources, capability to do what it is promising. And empathy is the third most important component of trust, the perception in other party that person is not only having capability, not only is uh, transparent in terms of representing in his or her behavior what he or she intends to, but also has ability to understand my pain, understand myself that is the empathy. So, authenticity, logic and empathy are the building blocks of trust, whether it is trust between two employees, employee and manager or employee managers on their organization. Second is fairness. Fairness is about procedural justice and distributive justice. People should be able to see the great place and great employers are those where people see, employees see that the rewards and recognition or punishment is given to people as it is justifiable. The process through which rewards, punishment or recognition is given is transparent and it is justifiable and it is available, it is given to different people without any bias. This is the procedural and distributive justice which builds the foundation of fairness. And third is respect, best employee relations are reflected in the form of dignity and not bullying. Bullying is also a very uh, fruitful, very rich field of research because bullying is very much prevalent in organization. Bullying may be verbal, may be in the, uh, on the uh, uh, electronic communication may be in the form of actions. So, bullying is opposite to respect and respect means acknowledging the need for dignity, acknowledging the dignity of the human being, dignity related to the basic drive about acquisition, about shelter, about food, about basic drive towards having the uh, social relationship and drive to make sense of how they are contributing to the larger scheme of things. So, there is a basic of all these four drives must be satisfied and that is the uh, aspect of dignity and that is called dignity and it is equally important aspect of the best employee relations at work.